Hey guys, this is Drew. Thanks for tuning in to TheLoneWolf.com. Today we're going to be reviewing the Fox 38. Now, uh, this is a fork that we have instantly fallen in love with. We've spent several months on it so far and got a ton of miles, a ton of vert, and uh, we're really excited to share this review with you. So the 38 comes in at 160 to 180 millimeters of travel. It is available in 29 or 27 and a half inch wheeled options. And they made a couple of limited edition colors, one of which is this pistachio, and they've got their factory racing orange. And those forks are only gonna be available with a 44 millimeter offset. However, the black fork comes with a 51 millimeter offset and 37 millimeter offset options. Um, obviously the 37 mil is uh, gonna have some limited specifications there, so check the site for more info there. So this fork again is designed to fit into that long travel enduro and free ride and e-bike world. So there's gonna be a couple of models available. There's gonna be an e-bike specific version, which is gonna have its own damper tune. There will also be a performance level, which is gonna be their base model, a performance elite, and the factory, which you see here. And those forks will retail from anywhere from $949 to $1,199. So the 38 has got a new arch, which you'll see predominantly right here staring at you up front. It's gonna be a little bit forward compared to most of the other arches you've seen on older forks. And the shape has been changed a little bit. And the reason for that is as um, head tubes are getting larger, especially on more aggressive enduro bikes and on e-bikes, uh, and offsets are getting shorter, the need to create an arch that is a little bit forward of that head tube. So at full compression, it's not gonna contact that frame. So along with the new arch shape and design, we've got a larger 58 millimeter crown. Now, again, as we've said, the longer travel enduro bikes and e-bikes, tube shapes are getting bigger, the, the look and feel of the bikes and the head tubes is getting larger. And so to kind of make the fork match the bikes and their big tubes a little better and to also offer even more stiffness out of this fork, 58 millimeter crown diameter has um, really kind of sets this fork apart and gives it the proper beefy look to match these bikes. Now something that you won't see from the outside is an elliptical steer tube. So what that allowed Fox to do is minimize weight in the areas where the steer tube's not getting a ton of stress or load and maximize strength in other areas. So the new 38 forks will be available with either the grip or the grip two dampers. Now the grip two, which we are testing here also has Fox's VVC or variable valve control, which um, allows the fork to offer a lot more tunability and customization on the trail. And uh, it actually lets you basically tune the fork in a way that uh, you would have had to take the fork apart to disassemble it and get into the internals. And now with this VVC, you're able to really maximize the adjustability and the control of that suspension damper externally with these knobs on the top of the fork. So um, props to, to Fox for making a really cool design that gives uh, riders a lot of customization uh, capabilities without having to open up that fork. So along with the grip two and VVC changes, uh, there is an updated Evol spring, which uh, we have been blown away with this fork is incredibly supple. It feels like a coil sprung fork. The plushness was one of the first things we noticed when we got on this fork. And um, so much so that, that uh, again, like we said, it feels like a coil sprung fork. But what the downside, if you wanna call it that is, is that some heavier or more aggressive riders will probably feel a need to add the volume reducer tokens in there, um, where maybe in the past they haven't needed to just because of that natural progressivity of an air spring. Um, you're not gonna, you're probably gonna be blown through travel a little bit more with this fork. Now, you know, I'm a guy who, depending on the terrain and the trails I'm riding and how steep they are, um, you know, at 165-ish, 170 pounds, I could just air up a little bit and kind of crank down compression and I didn't always need to add a volume reducer. Uh, with this fork though, I definitely found the need to add that. However, the off the top suppleness and uh, sensitivity on small chatter, off camber roots um, is superior to any other Fox or any other fork, I think, in recent memory. So, um, you know, you get a little bit of a trade off, you get a much more linear feel, you get a much more supple and sensitive feel, but you might need to add some volume, to volume reducer tokens in there to, uh, you know, give you a little more ramp up at the end. 
Now, when we get back down to the lower legs and examine them closer, you'll notice a couple of things that are a little different to some of their single crown trail forks in the past. In the back are two bleeders, and below those bleeders are channels that you'll see kind of um, sticking out from the casting or that fork leg. Now, the bleeders are there to obviously bleed air that gets into your system and into the forks, whether that's, you know, you leave at sea level and you drive up to the mountains or you're spending a long day at the park going up and down the chairlift. Um, air has a tendency, it, can, it just can get into your system. So by having these bleeders down there, you can get that out of the system and allow your forks to really remain supple and uh, performing at optimum levels. Right behind those air bleeders, you'll see a raised narrow channel running down the back of the leg. And that is an air and oil channel. And um, the purpose of that channel is actually twofold. Now, again, as we talked, air can kind of get into the system a little bit. Um, that's gonna be handled by the bleeders. As we talked about earlier, this fork's got a much more linear feel and these channels give the fork more air volume and allow it to have that, that smooth linear feel. So what happens is, is as the fork is compressing, typically in an air fork, the, the volume inside that chamber gets smaller. And as it gets smaller, it gets harder to push through. And that's what gives you that ramp. Now by having these channels, once that, that air gets down, it will actually circulate itself back up through those channels towards the bleeders. And it essentially enlarges the cavity inside where that that air chamber is. The other benefit of the channels is that it allows the lower leg bath oil to get pushed up with that air. So as you're compressing that fork, getting a big hit, while the air shoots up, the lower leg bath oil is also gonna shoot up. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna lubricate the foam rings and the bushings up at the top of the fork that don't typically get a lot of oil because it's sitting down at the bottom of the fork. So um, again, two great benefits by such a little detail that you really wouldn't assume does so much just from looking at it. As you move farther down the fork, you'll notice the axle um, system is a little bit different. It is a floating axle with a single pinch bolt. Um, it does require a, an Allen wrench. It's not a quick release or tool free axle, uh, but the benefits in our opinion, um, you know, I guess we also don't have a car where we're constantly taking the wheel out are definitely noticeable. So essentially what a floating axle is doing is it is a, eliminating the fork's need to have a very precise hub width to run smoothly vertically up and down and without any sort of like uh, pinching or restriction that will cause friction in the fork's performance. So essentially on the non-drive side, there is a single cinch bolt and it allows the, um, basically the axle to go into the fork and you can just snug it up a little bit so you're not you know, having to crank down that quick release or thread it a little too far to where you're starting to get your fork legs to bow in like that. And you can just cinch up that cinch bolt and that's gonna hold the fork in place. It's gonna keep the axle from backing out and it's gonna give you the straightest fork legs possible for the smoothest, most unimpeded performance when the fork needs to go up and down and not bend in or any other weird way. So that is, in a nutshell, the new Fox 38. Now we're gonna get into how the fork performed and the takeaway impressions that we've had over the last several months riding it. Um, we opted to put it on the front of this Trek rail 9.9 .9 because, well, we love riding e-bikes and it we knew that it would allow us to get way more vertical way more descent and uh just a lot more time in the saddle than we would on a, a traditional pedal bike i mean we could go out for uh half a day and get six thousand feet of descending on this fork on this bike whereas you know that we just don't have enough free time in our schedule to get that much vert on a pedal bike so um, that being said this bike came spec with a RockShox fork up front. And uh, if you've seen our recent e-bike shootout, it, it was a winner. It is one of our favorite e-bikes on the market. Um, so obviously the RockShox fork did not hold us back very much. However, when we put this 38 on, it took the bike to another level. It took our riding to another level. Um, it allowed us to, you know, instead of kind of being back here in this position riding, it put us up here over the front the confidence the stiffness i mean this thing doesn't twist at all it's it's not moving fore and aft nearly as much um, it stays up high the sensitivity 
the, the capabilities for big hits. And again, the travel's the same. We, we have it specced the same way. We had the same amount of travel on the RockShox and this 38, but it is a night and day difference in terms of how this per fork performs um, and the confidence that it gave all the riders that were on it. I spent the most amount of time on it, um, but we definitely had several other guys got on it and they instantly would, I mean, they didn't want to give the bike back because they're like, this is an amazing fork. And, uh, you know, after we got our first rides in it, we actually reached out to Fox because, you know, we didn't really believe this was a factory fork. We thought maybe that they kind of give it like the race tune or like the media hookup tune to make sure we had a great impression on it. Um, and they said like, they gave this thing a visual inspection, made sure it was good to go, put it in a box and it was off the line. So um, it's really impressive that we were able to get a fork, you know, without any special love or buttery treatment and be that impressed by it. So uh, Fox has, has definitely done something great here with this 38. Um, and uh, yeah, and we're, you know, we're not being paid. They did give us this fork to test, but we're, we're not being paid to say how awesome this thing is. It truly is next level. <clears throat> so the standout features to me, okay, are um, the chassis stiffness, which is noticeable, especially on an e-bike. Um, you know, I never thought a 36 wasn't stiff, um, but when I got on this, it kind of just gave me that next level of like, I didn't even know I was missing it. Um, in terms of the damper performance, suspension actuation, uh, it is a way above any other Fox fork I've ridden. Um, and like I said, probably any other fork I've ridden, period. It is incredibly supple. Um, if you remember the old Marzocchi stuff way, way back in the day, like it's got that off the top suppleness. It is just so plush, so smooth. Uh, the mid stroke support is there. So if you're in a berm coming through a G out, if you're going down some real steep terrain um, and you're heavy on the brakes, the fork won't be diving like some of those really plush soft forks would. Um, Again, we did need to add some volume reducers in here. We did air up a little. We added a little more low speed compression. We added some high speed compression, um, but that was a, a really fair trade off for the gains at the top of the stroke. When it came time to hit the big hits, that was honestly the, the, the hardest part for us to dial in because we weren't used to having a, a Fox kind of blow through travel quite so much, I, I guess, depending on the volume reducer setup. So. We aired up again, added compression, added some volume reducers, and really have probably the most well-rounded fork in our lineup, right? We got a garage full of bikes and forks, and um, this thing is the best off the top. It's great in the middle, and when it comes time to you know handle the big stuff, and it, it's ready and it can handle it all. So um, that is the Fox 38, folks. We are very stoked on this fork. Um, Honestly, can't really pick anything negative to say about it uh, other than the fact that it might require guys <clears throat> um, spend a little more time tuning that progressivity that didn't have to before. And beyond that, there's, there's not really anything we can pick out. Um, so thanks for watching, guys. Uh, we do have a RockShox Zeb that just showed up. Let us know if you would like to see us put it on this bike and do a head-to-head. -head. Um, cause that's kind of what we've been thinking about. We're not sure if you guys would be interested. So if you want to see a Zeb and 38 head to head review, leave a comment down below and let us know. Other than that, folks, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching and we'll see you out on the trails.